Great Britain, under loose examination, is the cradle of modern civilization. In 1660, the Royal Society was founded, the oldest national scientific institution in the world. By 1700, there were scientific institutions throughout Britain. So much of the technology embedded in today's society traced their lineage to inventions realized in Great Britain, such as televisions and telephones. But it's engines that have been among Britain's hallmark contributions. Starting with the first practical steam engine invented in 1712 by English inventor Thomas Newcomen. It was this great invention that led Scottish engineer James Watt and English manufacturer Matthew Bolton to improve on it and develop the Watt steam engine completed in 1775. The technology from the Watt engine allowed for factories to be built anywhere as up until this point were limited to areas where they could harness wind and water power. Factories that ultimately led to a new era of urbanization. The Watt steam engine led to technology used in locomotives and steamships which allowed for the rapid transportation of goods and people. The Watt engine and technology that came out of it drove the Industrial Revolution. The revolution that led us to the modern life that we enjoy today began in Great Britain. From Watt, we move on to Royal Air Force Engineer Officer Sir Frank Whittle, who single-handedly invented the turbojet engine. Whittle came up with the idea to use a turbine and compressors to extract power from exhaust and ultimately provide compressed air for the burner, and he was knighted for his accomplishments. So it's wonderfully befitting that today, Great Britain is developing the revolutionary synergistic air-breathing rocket engine, or Sabre for short. Sabre will power the world's first fully reusable single stage to orbit space plane called Skylon. Skylon is being developed by Reaction Engine Limited, or REL for short, which is headquartered out of Oxfordshire, England. Both Skylon and REL were born from the ashes of Britain's HOTEL program, which began in 1982. HOTEL stands for Horizontal Takeoff and Landing and the program aimed to design and build a single stage to orbit reusable wing launch vehicle and was jointly developed by Rolls-Royce and British Aerospace. Ultimately, the British government decided to withdraw funding for Holtol and the program shut down in 1988. But Alan Bond, the brainchild behind Holtol, and two principal engineers from Rolls-Royce, John Scott and Richard Varvel, who all worked together on the project, founded REL in 1989, determined to develop the world's first single-stage to orbit reusable space plane. By 1993, REL revealed the space plane proposal and its name, Skylon, after this futuristic-looking structure built in 1951 for the Festival of Britain. Skylon will be a spacecraft unlike anything we've seen before. It will measure 83 meters long with a 26 meter wingspan and an over 6 meter diameter. And it will weigh 325,000 kilograms fully loaded. The frame will be constructed out of silicon carbide reinforced titanium with skin made out of ceramic composite which will protect from re-entry. The Skylon design is long and slender as if it was a massive obsidian missile with tight compact wings. The four bell nozzles sheens brightly gradually propelling the 325 ton behemoth forward and quickly gaining the momentum for liftoff. The otherworldly space plane will require a special outstretched runway reinforced to support the tremendous size and will need to be almost 6 kilometers long. Up until now, orbital launch vehicles have been made up of mostly multi-stage rockets that launch vertically, and if they were winged, they were attached to rockets to help them reach space. Skylon will be able to take off like an airplane, to launch into space, and return and land like an airplane, all in a single stage, no boosters, just an elegant and simple architecture. And Skylon's innovation centers around the aforementioned Sabre. What makes the Sabre so innovative is that it's a hybrid that has characteristics of both a jet engine and a rocket engine. 
The key feature of the Sabre is the pre-cooler, which will allow the engine to withstand extreme temperatures. It uses a helium coolant loop along with an advanced heat exchanger system that incredibly cools the air from 1000 degrees Celsius down to negative 150 degrees Celsius in a fraction of a second. And REL successfully demonstrated the pre-cooler technology to the European Space Agency in 2012. The Sabre will enable Skylon to take off like a conventional jet and use hydrogen fuel to accelerate to Mach 5.4, which is almost five and a half times the speed of sound, or over 6,000 kilometers an hour. Once Skylon reaches an altitude of 26 kilometers, the Sabre switches to rocket mode and uses the internal liquid oxygen supply to reach orbital velocity. The Sabre's rocket mode can produce an outstanding 2,000 kilonewtons of thrust. To put that in perspective, SpaceX Falcon 9 uses nine Merlin 1D engines, each one producing 914 kilonewtons of thrust. So with the power of the Sabre, Skylon will have a payload capacity of 11,000 kilograms to the International Space Station. Ariel plans to manufacture space planes for international customers at $1 billion per plane, and they expect to have an initial market of at least 30 Skylons. They estimate that the development cost of Skylon will amount to over 7 billion euros. Here's the voice of Alan Bond from a lecture in 2010. I'm pleased to say that over the uh, past two years particularly, but numerous events perhaps spanning back four years, have led to a situation which at this very moment everything that I'm going to tell you tonight is actually happening. It's, it's not something which is a vague concept which may or may not come about. It may still not happen. We in Britain are extremely good at snatching the iron from the fire at the last minute. But uh, as things stand tonight, uh, the British government uh, has put an awful lot of effort into bringing space to the fore and that effort includes the work at reaction engines and for the first time in many years the British government is actually considering that we will look at the enabling technologies of getting payloads into space and not just being a nation that exploits other people's capabilities of getting things into space just so that we can do the space science or the communications and so on. We're actually interested in uh, providing the actual technology to do the job. You can see that he was cautiously optimistic about the British government's commitment to space. Three years after that lecture, Ariel received 50 million euros in 2013 and another 10 million in 2016 from the British government. And then British defense conglomerate BAE Systems invested 20 million euros in Ariel and acquired 20% stake of the company. And in 2017, Ariel was awarded a contract from DARPA for an undisclosed amount to conduct high temperature airflow testing in Colorado. And then in April 2017, Ariel started construction of an engine test facility in Westcott, Buckinghamshire, United Kingdom, where it plans to undertake the first ground-based demonstration of Sabre in 2020. And they hope to have an unmanned test flight by 2025. Knowing that the company is constructing an engine test facility is an encouraging sign because considering REL was founded in 1989, it's clear that Skylon has been dejectedly underfunded over the years. Sadly, five months ago, the great Alan Bond retired from reaction engines, citing that he's getting older and that he plans to study advanced concepts that he abandoned in 1982. He said that his year spent with Ariel was the most creative and inspiring time of his career. Now let's take a step back and view the historic line of remarkable engineers from Great Britain. From Thomas Newcomen and James Watt with the revolutionary steam engine to Sir Frank Whittle and the revolutionary jet engine, for what it's worth, I add Alan Bond to this line of great engineers. We wait for the moment Skylon takes to the sky and into space, and we wait to witness the continuation of the rich history of innovation from Great Britain and the UK at large, America's bilateral friend.
Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and see you on the next journey. As an American, it's so easy to be solely wrapped up in the affairs of the United States, especially involving the commercial aerospace industry where SpaceX dominates. And so I'm happy that I finally got around to doing a video on Skylon, because I think more people should know about it. And it's a great reminder that there's a whole world out there striving to do great things. And it was so fun to explore Britain's great lineage of science and to connect it with what Reaction Engines is trying to accomplish. And that's what I aim to do each week, to find deeper perspectives and meaning in the world around us. Which brings me to my wonderful patrons who have connected with my content enough to generously support this channel. I'd like to send a sincere thank you to Ernest Petrosine, Lodwick Brunning, Aurel Nada, and Barbara Ribeiro for pledging your support this week. You guys are so awesome and this will help my channel improve so much. And if you connect with my content and want to help me continue to make videos, you can pledge to my Patreon page in the description below. But I only want your help if you can afford to do so. I don't want you to stretch your budget for this channel. So if you can pledge as little as a dollar, every bit helps. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can receive two of these awesome Neoscribe stickers if you pledge $3 per video. Or you get two stickers and this awesome magnet if you pledge $5 a video. Thanks again and I'll see you on the next journey.